Good day. Welcome. This is your Daily Med with Lady V. Grace and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today as we continue to look at some things that will affect our prayer life, habits that will, or sins that will cause our prayers to be hindered. As we look today at St. Matthew chapter 5, verse 43 to verse 45, we will see that an unforgiving spirit hinders prayer. When I was growing up, uh, in Sunday school, we were taught this little song, root them up, don't let them grow. These little habits in the hearts of men, envy, jealousy, malice, and pride, they should never in our hearts abide. And so sometimes uh, when wrong is being done to us, we tend to hold on to it. But we will see this morning that Jesus is saying his will for his, uh, his children is that we will have a forgiving spirit. So for the forgiveness of our sins, as we see, is uh, dependent upon how we forgive the sins of those who have wronged us. So when we go to God saying, forgive us of our sins, he would have expected that as obedient children, we would have forgiven those who have wronged us. The measure we use for others is the same measure God uses for us. An unforgiving and judgmental attitude is a major cause of unanswered prayer in the life of the believer. We see that under the law, uh, it was said an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. And Jesus came and he gave us the final example of the higher righteousness demanded for us to be in the kingdom. He is concerned about the treatment of our enemies, a topic which grows naturally out of previous passages. Yes, the law had taught the Israelites to love their neighbors, Leviticus 19 and verse 18, and there was a righteous hostility directed against the enemies of God which were their enemies also but now Jesus announces that we are to love our enemies he says we are to pray for those who per persecute us the fact that love is commanded shows that it is a matter of the will I will my will to do the will of God. It is not the same as the natural affection because it is not natural to love those who eat us. It is not natural to love those who harm us. It is not natural for those for us to love those who persecute us and do all manner of evil against us. So it takes a supernatural grace 
and it can be manifested only by those who have divine life. There is no reward if we love those who love us. Jesus says that even unconverted tax collectors do that. This kind of love requires no divine power. Neither is there any virtue, he says, in greeting our brethren. I, my brother, how are you? I, my sister, how are you? He says if we greet them only and don't greet those who is our enemies, the unsaved can do that too. There is nothing distinctively Christian about that. If our standards are no higher than the world, then it is certain that we will never make an impact on the world. So as followers of Jesus, he says to us we should return good for evil. This is how we show that we are God's obedient children. Since God shows no partiality to either those that do evil or those that do good. On the both, he says, he makes his sun to shine and he makes the rain to fall. So we should deal graciously with all whether they are our friends whether they are our foes or whether they are our enemies so jesus was closing his sermon or this section of the passage with his admonition therefore you shall be perfect just as your father in heaven is perfect. God wants us to be spiritually mature children. This enables the Christian to imitate God in dispensing blessing to everyone without partiality. And so that's why we see in verse 44 of St. Matthew 5, where he says, I'm giving you commands. And the commands that he gives us is the will of God. That is what he wants us to do. He says we should love our enemies. He says we should bless them that curse us. Do good to them that eat us and pray for our persecutors. So we see from St. Matthew chapter 5 verse 43 to verse 48 it says you have heard that it was said you shall love your neighbor and eat your enemies but I tell you Love your enemies. Bless those that curse you. Do good to those that hate you. And pray for those who mistreat you and persecute you. That you may be children of your Father who is in heaven. For he makes his son to rise on the evil and on the good. And sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Don't even the tax collectors do the same? If you only greet your friends, what more do you 
than others. Don't even the tax collectors do the same? Therefore, you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. St. Matthew chapter 5, verse 43 to verse 48. He goes on to tell us, tell us in the Mahdi prayer also that we should forgive. He says, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you don't forgive men their trespasses, neither will your heavenly Father forgive your trespasses. St. Matthew chapter 6, verse 12, verse 14, and 15. So we see that even in the Mahdi prayer. He also says to us in St. Luke 6, uh, verse 37 and 38, Don't judge, and you will not be judged. Don't condemn, and you won't be condemned. Set free, and you will be set free. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be given to you for with the same measure you measure it will be measured back to you saint luke 6 verse 37 and 38 ephesians 4 and verse 32 tells us and be kind one to another be tender-hearted be forgiven each other just as God also in Christ forgave you. Jesus Christ first forgave us of our sins and he is expecting when others wronged us that we will do the same. He first loved us and he's expecting us to love. He said Jesus came and he sets the perfect example for us is sharing to imitate. God bless you. Thank you again for watching. Please like, please subscribe, please share, please comment. And also please visit my YouTube channel, Daily Med with Lady V. Also for these and more topics, uh, please visit our website at www.vitwcog.org. Be blessed.